So, how did growing up in Appalachia affect you, and how does it shape your view of life outside of the mountains? We always had food on the table and, and a lot of love. We knew we were loved, and that's all we needed. Uh, there wasn't that many people around. We didn't have that many neighbors, but everybody knew everybody else. And, and uh, I think it affected the way I felt about race. Uh, there was no racism up there, even though the black people lived in one section of the county and, and we lived in another, but we all went to church together. And when they worked in the coal mines, they all became out black. So it didn't make any difference. They stayed at our home. Mm -hmm. I was never afraid of a black person until I moved to Richmond. And I moved to Richmond during the time when there was race problems. Okay. And you didn't go into a black section of Richmond. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the way I was raised affected me. I, I, I had no racist feelings or did you, you didn't think about it. There was there was only one black child that I went to school with and he was mixed, his parents. And it was uh, he he was a novelty, but he enjoyed that because he was a center of attention, you know, but there was no racism. Okay. We grew up appreciating little things in life, family and honesty. Uh, if I found a penny on the road, Daddy wouldn't let me spend it unless I, I tried to find the owner of it. And uh, it, everything was about honesty. And my father wasn't a religious nut. He was he was very religious, but he didn't he didn't force us. Uh, he had a special relationship with God, and that's what I knew I wanted when I grew up. It, he made me want what he had instead of forcing me mm -hmm. to believe in his religion. And I appreciate that. I was uh, born with older parents. Mm -hmm. My mother was 45 when I was born. Oh, wow. Same age I was when I had my first grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that, there's pros and cons of that. I was, I was treated like a baby, you know, and my father would take me to church with him when I was in my 30s and he'd say this is my baby <laughs> but but there's also I lost my mother at 18 so there's there's a downside to being born to older parents too how many brothers and sisters did you have I had uh, six brothers I had two brothers and five sisters okay. that lived to adulthood okay. and my mother had 13 children and four miscarriages so there was six, six dead, and uh, there was one stillborn child between me and my sister Maxie, which was five years older. The children came every two years, basically, and uh, there wasn't a lot of doctors. You know, they they ask so much now when you go to the doctor your your health history. Why didn't they get help? You know, there was no help to get as far as medical help. I mean, you, Daddy didn't have a car, so he had to. The children, all except the first one, she had a doctor with her, and the rest of them were birthed with midwives. So uh, I guess uh, I appreciate my heritage. Mm -hmm. I think I learned things that I would never have learned if I had been born in Richmond, yeah. in a town, and I appreciate what I've learned. How would you say the coal industry affected your life? Uh, my father worked as a coal miner part of the time. Uh, actually, he worked 20-something years. He ended up with black lung benefits because of the coal mine. But uh, it was just what everybody did. The, the employment was limited in eastern Kentucky. It was either you were either a merchant or a coal miner or a teacher. That was about the three <laughs> major industries that, that we worked in or had to work in. And 
Daddy stressed education to us. Not all the families did, you know. It's uh, the girls got to be teenagers. They got married. They had families, and they struggled like all of them. And Daddy wanted all of us to to get a college education. Not all of us did, but, but at least all of us got some some college before, before we gave up on it. <laughs> before I had two kids and diapers and the kitten. <laughs> yeah. So this is it. So how was your childhood living there in Letcher County, and how did the relative poverty affect you? I don't think the poverty affected us at all. As far as my clothes, I didn't have a lot of them, but the kids I went to school with didn't have a lot of new clothes either. There might have been one or two that, that was better off financially than we were, but uh, I don't think it affected me at all. We had food on the table and a place to sleep. And our houses were cold, but they, we had plenty of cover, so I don't think it affected me. I think it made me appreciate maybe what I have today. And and material things are still not important to me. I'd rather have my family, and and uh, that's that's what's most important. When you die, you leave it all in it. Mm -hmm. so. Around the sixties and seventies, did you notice any changes? In society with the war on poverty? No. In the 60s, they started, people started coming back to save the poor, impoverished mountain people, you know. But they weren't looked on very kindly because they they treated us as if we were beneath them. And and we weren't. <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's what we felt. So, uh, uh, that was the only thing I noticed about then the television started sending people, but they always took the picture of the worst house or the worst family. If there was a family that was kind of illiterate and and whatever, you know, they they would even ask you to take your shoes off so they could take a picture of you barefooted, you know, and it, it just, they weren't thought very well of. Do you feel that the culture of Appalachia has changed since you were growing up? Oh, yes. How so? There's drugs. The only drug we had was alcohol when I, I graduated in 1961. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I mean, I didn't know anybody in our high school. There was 53 in my graduating class, and nobody that I knew of smoked pot or or. I did any kind of drugs, and now it's just rampant back there. Mm -hmm. but, uh, that's the biggest change I see. Okay. And after I grew up, the coal mines started paying good wages, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the people bought more, had more. Uh, but then when they shut down the coal industry, people were really hurt. Do you think that Appalachia is better or worse today than it was when you grew up? Money-wise, it's probably better. Uh, morally and <laughs> and everything like that, I'd say it was worse. Uh, I think the kids, a lot of the kids today in eastern Kentucky, I think, see what goes on on television and thinks that's the way the life should be. And it's not. I mean... I don't think there's a family or very few families up there that hasn't had a drug-related death, an overdose. Uh, I mean, it's it's really bad. It may, I don't think it's any worse than it is in Richmond, mm -hmm. but because it's a, there's less people and you know everybody and, and it just seems worse, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, if you could change uh, one thing about Appalachia, what would you change and why? Strip mining. Strip mining? Why is that? Well, you saw the day we were up there that where I said the lady's house was, and it was just a flat place. The hill was gone. When we grew up, we never worried about tornadoes, anything like that. And and now they have to because they've cut the mountaintops off, and there's nothing to stop the wind. 
whatever. It's just it it changes the whole area. It just doesn't look the terrain is totally different than it was when I grew up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the questions we have written down. Any insight you can share with the class? Be careful of how you judge people because of where they came from. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of being born in eastern Kentucky. We're all human beings, and we all have the thoughts and the dreams just like everybody else. Yeah. And it's uh, just, just don't judge a with Bates cover, you'll find that we're all alike in the end. Yep. But I, I'm very proud of the fact that the way my parents raised me. And yep. Like I said, I, I lived on a lot of hand-me-down clothes from my sisters, but they didn't hurt me. I, I did fine. All right. well, thank and if it you. wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here. I know. <laughs> I'm pretty grateful of that. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much for letting us interview you.